Women's volleyball head coach Heather Olmstead joins us via Skype on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Heather, uh, first question, have you watched any of the matches back while you've been in this quarantine situation? That is a good question. I have not. I have not done that, but I should. Okay, there's plenty of time. We all have plenty <laughs> yeah. of time right now. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about what you're doing as a BYU coach, but as a, as a person, what are you doing to uh, engage yourself uh, outside of your job? Yeah, oddly enough, it's actually taken up quite a bit of time just to get organized, just to organize our team, organize our coaching staff, organize our duties. And so that's taken up quite a bit of time, but there's still a lot of time left to do other things. So connect with family and friends, um, be outside and, and just do the best we can to support, you know, what's going on and the community and, and do our job. What I'm really getting at is what TV shows are you watching? <laughs> okay. All right. So I, uh, I'm trying to finish, finish off Better Call Saul. So that's oh, what I'm working nice. on right now. Great yeah. show. Very nice. Great show. Very nice. We're and, uh, I did watch the popular one going on right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So Tiger, Tiger King. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, with that in mind, you need to contact your brother, Sean. Okay. You just, just, that's all I'm going to say. You need to contact him and, and ask him his thoughts on the show and, and how he's uh, repping that. Yeah. Um, Cougar uh, King is the new <laughs> doc that we need here, right? Yeah. Uh, Heather, how has the sports shutdown over the last three weeks impacted your life the most? Yeah, besides the obvious of not being able to see our, our kids and interact with them on a daily basis and just get used to the norm of how we're going to communicate with them via you know technology and we're just so grateful that we can i think the biggest thing for me is just not being able to see family my my twin sister had a baby a month ago shout out to ida and i haven't been able to see her or meet her so hopefully that's in the near future but things like that where you'd normally be able to interact um, are put on hold a little bit longer for good reason yeah, there's, there was that uh, wild photo of uh, three generations of grandpa seeing his grandson through a window, right? It's just, a, it's just a unique time. And certainly you're hoping that there's a women's volleyball season on time. We've been talking about football and, and the potential impact there. Um, what are the conversations like, uh, if there are any at all, relative to women's volleyball schedule in the fall? Our conversations are really centered around what, what can we do today? What can we do to, to win the day today? What's, what's our tasks to be the best versions of ourselves, to take care of ourselves personally, emotionally, physically, then our families, and then take care of what we need to do as far as school or volleyball. Those things are not as important as just being healthy mentally and physically and in a good place. So we're just focused on tasks we can do to accomplish each day. Um, and that's really what we're doing, staying in the present and it's out of our control whether or not this fall happens, but we're going to prepare as if it is until someone tells us it isn't. It's a unique time, too, because the athletic facilities are shut down. It's not like athletes can go work out and, and practice, you know, serve and pass and whatnot. So I guess what are, what are athletes, uh, I guess, able or encouraged to do right now? Yeah, whatever they can. We've got workouts that we can legally send out to them to help them do some at-home workouts. Most kids don't have any weights that they can be using to stay in shape. You know, they have a volleyball here or there that they can go pepper with some friends or family. But really, you know, it's everyone's trying to be creative and there's no replacement for actually playing volleyball. But there are things you can do, you know, to keep keep your mind sharp and you can watch a lot of film. You can watch film of yourself. You can watch film of other players professionally, internationally, and always look to, to expand on your knowledge of the game in other ways if you can't physically do it. How much communication do you have with your team uh, and, and the roster right now? Yeah, quite a bit. Like I said, just getting organized, like this is our new norm. What, how are we going to operate as a team? What's our communication like? Obviously, we are still in our spring season, and we know people's actual seasons got cut short. So for us, it was very minimal. Uh, we had a, a great opportunity to be together for quite a few weeks training in our 20 hours. So we're grateful for what we had, and we feel for those that have been impacted by what's going on and seasons cut short. So um, just doing the best we can, and uh, yeah. Uh, you're coming off a 26 and five season, another tremendous season into the second round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, you lose McKenna Miller and Mary Lake, a couple of notables that have been uh, in the program for the past four years. How do you feel about the roster going into 2020? Yeah, we feel great. We're excited for who we, who's uh, going to go forward with us in 2020, and, and they're all excited. We've got a couple of middles we're adding: Leilani Dodson, Ali Hakes. We've got a libero, Maddie Allen from California, and. Uh, a lefty who was with us this this winter already in Michaela Tolman. So 
we're excited and obviously our returners are excited. They were working hard before the, the shutdown and, and looking forward to a, a great 2020 season. Hey Coach, I was talking uh, with you and Mary Lake earlier this week and, and Mary's already ready to give Maddie Allen the uh, the title of the next person to be the all-time digs leader. So what type of player is Maddie Allen? Because those are uh, big words from a player like Mary Lake. Yeah, Mary's awesome. Just, she's so humble. And uh, Maddie's a great passer. She's got a good feel for the ball. She's got a great platform she's been coached really well in high school and club and so she's she's got good skills so she's gonna be able to come in and impact us right away and and she she understands that it's unique to have uh you know married athletes in college bureau is more than most i would i would gander and then you have two on your team that are married to men's volleyball players is that is that advantageous they can pepper uh, oh, yeah. you know mckenna miller with alex asu and zach and kennedy yeah. eschenberg I told Kennedy she better be getting some mad pe pepper <laughs> sessions with Zach, especially, especially if Zach's coming back. He needs to stay active, and, and th that men's volleyball team was rolling, you know, and uh, they, they did such a good job this year. So it's it's fun to be able to interact with the men's team and learn from them, and what we had learned from, you know, the way they rebounded from last year was just huge for us to watch, and we're so excited for them and their future. It's been fun to see that interactivity, too, between the two teams. Obviously, it's two couples there, but that you guys support each other, not only because the coaches are siblings, but because you're fans of the other team. That I, I feel like that's something that you guys make sure yeah. you do for the other team. Yeah, there was no doubt in our mind that our men's volleyball team was going to win that national championship this year, and that's fine. They'll do it next year. And it's it's just cool to see our girls love to go to the games and support and, and have see those guys have success. We see them working hard every single day, and so it's cool. And they show up at the women's volleyball matches. And when it's pink night, those guys have all the pink, right? Yeah, it's super cool. Heather, we uh, had an opportunity to sit down with you recently uh, and Mary Lake and Kennedy Eschenberg to watch back one of the all-time greatest wins in BYU volleyball history when you took down number one Stanford in late August of 2018. What was it like for you as the coach to uh, be next to uh, your players and, and relive that match? You guys, I have to admit something to you. I had not watched that match from BYU TV's perspective since it happened. So that was the first time I actually watched <laughs> it the night before to get ready. Wow. I don't watch replays and I love you guys and I love BYU TV, but it's just, I lived it. I, I lived it. So, but it was really cool to be able to watch it, get prepped for what we were going to be doing and to, to chat with you and Mary and Kennedy was just a highlight for me. Just, it was so cool. I'm excited for everybody to watch that. Admit it, you were you you enjoyed it a little, especially when you <laughs> when you remembered how awesome that was. And the, I loved it. The smile on your face was epic that night, Heather. It was so fun, and it was just a great match to be able to play the number one team in Stanford and just leave it all out on the court and play free and and know that we were all in it together. I mean, it was awesome. Great stuff. That play-by-replay uh, -replay special is coming up very soon. We also have another play-by-replay special with BYU Basketball. Uh, Heather, it's, it's great to talk to you. We wish you continued uh, safety and health, and uh, I hope we're talking about a lot of volleyball come this fall. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. We appreciate everything you're doing.